to another blessed experience together. I am requesting us to kindly rise up to have a word of prayer as we begin this session. Let's pray. Our kind and loving master, Lord, we thank you for this wonderful opportunity to spend time at your feet. Father, we know that we have come with various needs and some of us just want to experience your goodness in this hour. Lord, I pray that as our hearts rise to you in prayer, praise, and thanksgiving, may you receive it and may your blessings ascend to us in various ways. Guide us now, for this is my humble prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. Uh, Welcome once more. We will turn to... Him five hundred.
Um, I request that we all rise up with the with our theme song. See. Him six hundred and eight. Him six hundred and eight. Faith is the victory. Faith is the victory, oh glorious victory that overcomes the world. Let us humble ourselves and pray. Father God, in the quietness of this evening, we present ourselves before Thee that, Lord, You may bless us that we have come, O oh Lord, to feed from thee. This evening, your children have come to humble themselves and to ask for forgiveness of their sins. Father God, as we start this session, in this sixth day of the ten days of prayer, we want to thank you for having been with us since the beginning. And Lord, even this day, we invite your presence to be with us. As your servant shall rise to speak to us, Father God, may you help our souls to listen to your word. And Lord, may the word that sh shall come from thee strengthen us even as we persevere over the days to come as we wait upon thee. Remember those who had planned to be here, but have not been able to make it here, O oh Lord. We pray for them wherever they are, even those who will be following this program online. Father God, we pray that your Holy Spirit may, may be with all of us. For this is our humble prayer, believing and trusting in Jesus' name. Amen. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. If you can hear my voice, may I see your hand. Thank you so much. May God bless you. And welcome to our 10 days of prayer, the sixth day of this program at... New Life SDA Church on 5th Ngong Avenue in Nairobi. Uh, the program started on Wednesday, and today is our sixth day, and we welcome you to join us every evening at the sanctuary on 5th Ngong Avenue. Now, it's time that I want to invite perhaps those of us who have been here since the beginning of this program, 
and maybe you have a testimony to give of how um, the program has blessed you or just you want to give a thanksgiving of something that has happened in your life and you want to thank God for. Or perhaps you want to share with us a testimony of uh, something that has happened to you. As you prepare to do so, I want to um, uh, just direct us to reflect on the words uh, that Paul wrote to the Thessalonians in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, uh, verse 16. And it says, Rejoice always, pray without ceasing. In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. That no matter what happens, we give thanks to the Lord. And we should always do this without ceasing. Now, it may be something small, it may be something big, but you want to share with us. Is there someone who has a testimony that may, they may want to share with us by a show of hands? Anyone with us this evening? Yes, I can see Is someone coming. Anyone? Okay, then I want to invite the chorister. Maybe we can sing one song. Um, as we wait, there's someone there. Am I seeing a hand? Okay, just come, we sing one song as we prepare for the next session. Let's turn to him 500.
Take time to be holy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When Elder asked for testimonies, I realized that most of us do not even seem to, to note that your ability to be here this evening is a great testimony. I am sure that you battled many things. To make the decision to come here is a big testimony. And sometimes we do not want to see the small things and the small victories that we get as testimonies. I'm sure some of you, as you are coming, you are called for some business meeting, but you chose to come here instead. Sinikweli. Sinikweli. And that is a testimony. It's in the little things that we do that we are able to glorify God. Don't wait to look for big things to happen at Isasa you and your testimony. That you're here, tell your neighbor that you're here, you, are, you have overcome. Even in your mind, a lot of you may have battled. Niende, ah, I'll watch online. Niende, ah, see, go online. But you decided, uh uh, I'm going to church today. That is victory. That is a testimony. Hallelujah. The battles that we fight are not physical, the battles that we fight are spiritual because we are fighting principalities, powers of forces of darkness. You know, powers that we cannot see but they are influencing us through the decisions that we make. Hello. Turn to your neighbor and tell your neighbor, child of God, congratulations, you are a victor. Mwambie, mwambie. Yani umekuja hapa, hapa leo hii, Nairobi hii. Na uko hapa. Hey. You are great people. You truly have indicated your great desire to be at the feet of Jesus. I thank God for today. I, I congratulate you again, people from Nairobi, how you are able to maneuver your jams and come to church on time. This morning, Pastor, I decided to take my grandchild to school. She was going to school for the first time. So I told the mother that I would be the one to take her. Now that she also had her own issues. And I left here by around... A a few minutes to seven, hoping I'll get to Ruaka, pick her, and take her to Gigiri, and then come back. And believe you me, from here, I got to Ruaka at about 9.30, going to 10. And from Ruaka to Gigiri, I was getting there about 11.30. So I said, when I see people come to church in time, hallelujah, you are wonderful people. You have gone out of your way. You have woken earlier. You have prepared yourself earlier. May the Lord reward that effort. I experienced it today, and I just have loved everybody that I see walking through that door every evening. God in heaven, it is our sixth day. We thank you because for five days we have felt your presence. For five days you have walked with us. On this sixth day, do not forsake us. Be with us. I've stood again just as a tool. Use me for the purpose that you desire for each and every individual so that whatever I speak will be interpreted into the hearts and the minds of everybody listening at a personal level. And each person will listen to the message as their message. 
Thank you, Lord, for your grace, which is sufficient. In Jesus' mighty name. Holy Spirit, take over. Our theme is priorities of faith. The sixth day of our ten days of prayer. Practically, we have now turned over. We are looking at the finish line on Sabbath day. It's like that time when you're running around the, um, the field, if you are an athlete, and when you are on the last lap, the bell rings and the focus now, every effort is, how am I going to finish? So if for the other five days you have been busy, you have just been popping in, now we are on the last stretch to the end of 10 days of prayer. Do not let the blessings that have been packaged with these 10 days of prayer miss you out. It's this week, give it your best. Give it your all by decluttering, by ensuring that you put away the things that hold you back to be with the Lord. And the title today is Grit, Passion, and Perseverance. Grit, Passion, and Perseverance. Our theme, our, our word for today comes from the book of Galatians, chapter 6, verse 9, which reads, And let us not grow weary of doing good. Let us not grow weary. Let us not grow weary. I am repeating this because that is a very important statement. And it is in repetition again that our subconscious mind picks the sentence. So some of these words, I wish to have them engraved in our unconscious mind because they will now speak to us even as we walk the journey. Let us not grow weary. Tell your neighbor, let us not grow weary. Tell your neighbor, do not grow weary. Of doing good. For in due season we will reap. But only if we do not give up. Amen. Let me quickly start by highlighting on the context of this verse. So that you understand it much more deeply. Before I delve into speaking about this, the word that we have just heard. The book of Galatians is part of a section of the scriptures called the epistles. And the epistles are not books. They are actually letters which were written by Paul. And Paul wrote these letters to the churches to encourage them and to challenge them to live a life in the light of the gospel. To live a life in the light of the gospel. Because yes, you can live your life, but are you living your life in the light of the gospel? That is the question. We all are living our lives. But many times we live our lives in the light of our own understanding and our own ability. But Paul wrote to the churches and his focus was so that they can be able to live their life in the light of the gospel. Now, the Galatians was uh, written to the church in Galatia. And the church in Galatia uh, brought together the Jews and uh, the Gentiles. And these two people we all know had issues among themselves. This definitely presented among uh, the church, in the church at that time, a theological crisis. The Jews constantly were telling the Gentiles that they had to, first of all, convert to Judaism before, coming, before becoming a Christian. So Paul then writes this letter that we are reading today to try and confront this heresy. Heresy, heresy, heresy. Hey, give me the right sentence. Uh, uh, mm, yo, hallelujah. Buena sifiwe. And to remind the church that salvation is not found by works, but by Christ alone. If you're not saying amen, then you've not understood. 
You know me, when I read the Bible, or somebody speaks here, na amesema kitu ambaye imeniguza, yani kitu ambaye nimesema ndiyo hiyo, I can never keep quiet. I will always say amen. And you know when I say amen, what, I mean, what do I mean? Let it be. So let it. So when something also you realize that that is true, you are being told that salvation is not by works, but it's by Christ alone. And you still can say amen to that. Hallelujah. Bwana sifiwe. Bwana sifiwe. When we read the book of Galatians, towards the end of it, Paul switches gear now from theology to application. And that is where we are. From theology to now practical applications. We realize that in uh, chapter 5 of the Galatians, Paul started by laying down out the marks of a Christian life. And given as a list of things to avoid. In Galatians 6 now, he gives his sending charge. He now starts charging the Galatians. He is called to apply what he has been talking about in their lives. I hope that for these 10 days that we have been speaking, the matters that the Lord has presented before you are not just for your hearing, but you will take a step in applying them in your life. If you've been asked to declutter, declutter. I thank God for an online speaker uh, an online um, viewer who called me this morning and said, Weh, I am decluttering. I loved watching Ramogi. I loved watching Ramogi. And I realized as I was going through my days and my times and how I spend it, I realized Ramogi takes a bunch of my time and I can watch it even late. So I sleep late, then I cannot wake up early. And from yesterday, my sister, I decluttered, I no longer watch Ramogi. Simple things. The Lord does not want you to do big things. He wants you to do little, simple steps. Is somebody hearing me? Is somebody listening to me, Quinn? Ask your neighbor, are you hearing? Now that I've given you the context, let's look at Galatians 6, 9. And let's see how it applies to our lives today. We are told, do not grow weary in doing good. Do not grow weary in, in, doing, in doing good. Very simple sentence. That as Christians today and as followers of Jesus Christ, we are being asked in one word, do not get discouraged. Do not get. We are being told, don't get tired. We are being told, don't give up. Hello? Buona sifiwe. We are being told that yes, life can beat you down. And you can face opposition even by doing good. Sometimes you face challenges even when you're giving your best. And you ask yourself, why? I expected appreciation, but I am meeting rejection. The Lord is telling you, don't get discouraged. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It can feel like we are doing all the hard work for nothing. You could be sweeping the church and being the earliest, but nobody ever, ever remembers even to say thank you. Even when pastor stands here to give accolades to the workers of the church, you realize that your simple little effort in the church is hardly ever noticed and your name is never mentioned. And you sit in the pews and you say, me me say, come a wow. All the word of God is telling you today, do not get discouraged. Hallelujah. Let us not grow weary in doing good. 
and growing weary in doing good is a constant danger in the lives of Christians today. I don't know if my brother has come into the church. Ken, are you there? No. Ah, praise the Lord. We had a conversation with him this morning that reflected the message that I am giving today. Hallelujah. Paul is constantly urging his readers to not lose hearts, not to grow weary in doing good. In the previous chapter, he laid down an understanding of what doing good is. And so, when you read uh, Galatians 5, you will understand uh, what sort of person you ought to be. And what are there? The fruits of the Spirit says, joy, patience, kindness, na na na. No, no, no. That the Lord tells you that when you have that type of nature, that character, don't let that character go. I know many times the world can change you into a person who is bitter. And even when you're good, you become bad. But be like this person who saw a snake burning, and I'm sure a lot of you have read that story, and he tried to help the snake and get the snake from the fire. But even at the point of getting the snake from the fire, the snake bit his hand. So he quickly shook the snake back into the fire. And immediately again, he now looked for a rod. He realized he could not quickly get the snake out of his of fire without uh, something that is longer. So he looked for a longer rod and got the snake out of the fire. A gentleman was watching him keenly and asked him, why did you throw the snake back after it bit you and you then went ahead and still rescued the snake again and you realize the snake is dangerous, it can hurt you. He said, the nature of the snake, that is the nature of the snake. I cannot accept the nature of the snake to change my nature. So even if the snake is a bitter, a dangerous, uh, what sort of person, I will learn to remain good. Hallelujah. Is somebody hearing me? Buona sifiwe. You've seen women who, because their husbands are in fidel, are in infidelity, they say, Sasa, kama unaenda, hata mimi nimeanza. Your character is changing because of another one. And if you don't greet me, I don't greet you. My brothers and sisters, even if you greet somebody, happy Sabbath, and they don't greet you, greet them again next Sabbath, happy Sabbath. Don't say, mani salimi, tukai. Is somebody hearing me? Some people don't even go to visit one another because somebody did not visit them. So they didn't visit me, so you don't visit them. So that is changing your character. Do good. Don't be wary. And don't give up in doing good. Somebody hearing me? I know a lot of people who do not even go to other people's fundraising because they did not come to theirs. Who? Even me, I had. She didn't come. Pass my regards. Take my prayers. Prayers that you say and you never pray anyway. Hello? Buona asifiwe. Buona asifiwe. Now, after knowing about kindness, goodness, patience, long-suffering, he is now telling us today that, yes, those are the characteristics and the attributes you need to have. Do not tire, even when the world is against you. Keep doing good. Amen. Well, as if you were, though a lot of times your good work may seem in vain, but they are not in vain. I can assure you that your good works are doing something in your life, in your faith, and in the lives of people around you that you may not understand. I remember at one time, I had a battle in my church, a big battle. And the battle was, I had been a personal ministry for three consecutive years. And while I was personal ministries, I introduced very key activities in the church. Some have even been adapted by our 
local, our union at that time. I introduced preaching and having an interpreter for the deaf. And when I started that mission, it was fought. People didn't understand. They told me they are not deaf. Then I said, how can they come when they know they will not hear? Let us get somebody. Then they will know there's somebody. They will come when there's somebody. Let us first of all lay the ground. So I did that. The church refused. And I remember I asked within my friends who is keen on learning sign language. Initially, I brought somebody from Kilifi to come every Sabbath and I was paying her my money, fair to and fro. Sit there, no deaf, but she was just doing her things. But because I brought her and she's come to church, nobody could stop her. And she continued. Then I realized bringing her was expensive. So I asked and I remember my friend Margaret Dulo offered. And I paid her first fees, 6,000 shillings then. And she came back and she started the ministry. Believe you me, the one yesterday church when I was there was the first church that conducted a deaf wedding. They even had a deaf ministry choir. When Pastor Moasia came to Mombasa and he found the, that happening, he got impressed. And he came back and he called everybody from every other conference and failed to send one person to be trained. So today I stand here saying, out of my efforts, deaf ministry is an issue in our church. But it's a little millicent in Mombasa. And nobody even knows and I never talk about it. I think now and the other day is when I was talking about it when I was at the Congress, the ENF Congress. Within that time, within that time, I told the church, we cannot be going to plant plant to go preach in areas where people are poor and they have nothing and we just take the gospel and we do nothing to them. And I'm talking about uh, a, a program that started over 25 years ago. That is when I was personal ministries. Don't try and calculate my age from that. Okay? Buona sifiwe. Buona sifiwe. So I told them when we go to outreach, we must get money to buy them land, build them a church, and start a business enterprise. So the first, the first program we had was Gotani. And Gotani, we went, left a structure, and we left, uh, we left them an enterprise for selling paraffin. And we bought land. Hallelujah. Come the fourth year now, I think people are also tired, Pastor decided that other than the nomination committee just putting together names on their own, he passed out papers to the whole church and wrote, asked them, in each and every category, you as a church member who comes to church every day and goes, who do you feel can fill that position? I don't know what went into pastor's head. Believe you me, 90% of the people who wrote elder, my name was there. It was going to be the first woman elder. Not just the first woman elder, the first woman widow elder. So I, when they read that, I think they just decided, I, too many people seem to feel this lady should be an elder. Watch her to, to work it. When the name was announced in church, Wololo, 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 wololo. Hell broke loose. A bunch of women students said, A widow, a widow cannot be an elder. A woman and then a widow. That time I was struggling to do business. You know, when you're a widow, even when you just greet a man very nicely and smile, and that's why you realize I'm very cautious with my, I smile, then I stop, because I don't know how far I should smile. I may smile too much that the wife says, why has that smile taken too long? Because women have the ability of even measuring how, how many seconds your smile has stayed on. <laughs> hey, hey. Buona sifiwe. Buona sifiwe. A woman and a widow. Now when you greet a man and you're a winner, you greet them or you greet them or the man, the handshake, even how long and how heavy is measured. So if there is any man who has ever been around me, it is concluded, she's, she's having an affair. 
Even if I carried a man in my car, do you see? One to you if I carry you three, four times, Kwisha Maneno, deal sealed. How can she carry a man two, three, four times? Buona Sifil. That came up. Hey, we see her. We see her with there. We know she's doing. She cannot be an elder. It was hell broken loose. And then I also said, I did not choose myself. It is the committee. So that was the spirit of God. I cannot, I cannot be moved. <laughs> hello, hello. But the war raged. Mpaka, my first elder, God bless his soul, elder, late elder Bore, came to me and told me, Millicent, just step down for peace. I told him, who, me? So you remember I was karate. I took that, I take that attitude also in the, dealing with the devil. I told him, who, me? I stepped down, how? I didn't choose myself. Elder Bore didn't break through. Pastor had to call me, and he told me, for peace, it's too much. It can't. Even you, you'll be ministering amidst conflict. Just step down. It is well. And when pastor reached out to me, I was taught to respect men of God. Even the ones who are serving among us day and night, praying for us, visiting us, I was taught to honor them. So when pastor spoke, I laid down my tools. But even me, I had picked my arsenals. Niluambia tutapambana, tutabanana hapa hapa. Sininyumba ya baba yangu, buwana asifiwe. So you can imagine, I have done so much. Deaf ministry, uh, what, what. Personal ministries, three years consecutively. Everybody was grateful in the way I was trying to open up how the church can be involved and bring people into the church. And suddenly, I have a battle. I am being rejected. I am not the right person. You can imagine how that can hit you on the face. And then you're a widow. You don't even have anybody to go home with and say, Hey, hiyo ni ngumu. You go back to your segment squares in your bedroom, you are looking at the wall alone. You don't even have anybody to talk to because at that time everybody is an enemy. You don't know who to trust and not who to trust. The Bible is telling you not to get wary of doing good despite the challenges you'll get both within the church and outside. Is somebody hearing me? Buona sifiwe. You know the challenges we live in a world where we want instant results. Instant. You want to go to the gym today and then you take a tape measure tomorrow. How? <laughs> Is somebody hearing me? We want instant results. We want to pray once, just once, and our faith is now strong. But the reality is Growth takes time. Hello? Growth takes time. And God has designed life this way. That is how he has designed life. In, if you do the right things over time, you will get the results at the end of the day. Growth takes. And the same is true to our walk with God. The same is true to our walk with God. Thank you, my sister, who has taken upon myself to ensure that I have handkerchiefs every Sabbath. Mukiona, these new, new handkerchiefs that I'm using, somebody has taken it upon herself to ensure that I have a new handkerchief every day. And I'm telling you, God is also taking it upon himself to ensure that something new happens in your life every day. You cannot bless me and go without a reward. I am a servant of God. You know, I told you now I represent heaven. Hello? So whatever you... There will be seasons, my friends, when you give your all and it seems like nothing happens. There'll be seasons that you're going to prayer. You fast. You pray. You fast. You even go to the mountains. You hear there are mountains. You go to the mountains. Three days dry fast. Seven days dry fast. But Mambo Yanabaki Pale. Pale. Hello. 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 You are struggling to get off certain habits. 
You said, I'm going to now start reading my book. I want my faith to grow. Una dipata uko pale. Pale. Your friends will reject you the way my friends rejected me. They turned their back, even very close ones. The ones who are very, very close made sure that when those things were being said, they were behind the church or they were outside. But you know, you can only, you can only value a friend when you see them standing up with you. And sometimes you feel like there's no fruit in your life. Umengangana uwe mtu wa maombi. Bado. So you feel like your life is fruitless. Your life is, you're not gaining anything. And it is very discouraged. Discouraging. But does that mean that something is not happening? I want to assure you. I want to assure you that growth takes time. Even at those moments that you feel something is not happening because we are in a spiritual world, there is something happening. Amen. Amen. There is something happening. You only cannot see it. But it is happening. In due time, you will reap. In due time, you will, we will reap. And we will not just reap kidogo. We will reap a harvest. Yani uta reap kweli kweli. You will reap. Eh, something like that. Bona si fiwe. Paul continues to remind us that, that the proper time you will reap a harvest. Not a single piece of fruit. You will reap a harvest. I go back to what I was talking to my brother this morning when he called me. We have not spoken for a while. And he was telling me, oh, you lost my sister. And I said, I'm okay. Niko too. And how are you doing? I said, me, what I'm saying is this year, God has just opened the floodgates for me finally. I have gone through very crazy financial times, extremely crazy financial times. Times that you even find uh, you cannot pay electricity and you disconnect and you keep playing cat and mouse game with power. You know, you lock the door, you lock the gate so that when they come, they don't find you. And they realized I was playing cat and mouse game. So one day I came and I found they chopped it from the pool. You know, those hard financial times, difficult. Your mother needs something and you can't even have the money to send her. This year, I told him, my land, I had a piece of land in Mwebelegeza where people had gone and changed the title. Picked it, changed the title. And when I went to the Ministry of Lands, they told me this is no longer your land. You sold it. I was brought for a file and they showed me my signature. And true to the word, I had never sold that piece of land to anybody. But they showed me a signature. They showed me my photo. I assumed they must have taken, taken my photo from the previous transaction and put it on this transaction. But there's nothing I can do if the ministry registry are the ones who are telling you your land is gone. But I had gone to that piece of land and I had stepped on it and prayed that, Lord, may this land come back to me. And that is in 2007. 2007. Eight. Last week, last week, the registrar, the chief registrar, a new one who came on board, sent me a list of the names of the people who own land in that area. And it is prime land. It is a place where an acre and a plot, they were in plots, a plot goes for about seven to eight million. He sent me a list of those who own land. So he told me, look at number 627, 625, and 626. And I quickly dashed to 625, 626. And I realized that this government recognizes that I have two plots. And they are under my name. In due season, you will reap not a fruit. Yani itaja. And imagine if I sell the two of them, which I am going to do, at basically 8 million, I am 16 million. So a millionaire is talking to you. Hallelujah. 
And you know, it's not that I am proud, but I just want you to know the ability of God to enable you to reap if you keep holding on. Is somebody hearing me? Buana Sifiwe. From having my electricity being connected at the pole to a millionaire, which means I can pay their bill even two years in advance. Waache kunisumbua. Buana Hallelujah. While sometimes you may see your work to the Lord and for the Lord, like it is not producing much. People are wondering, why are you going to church? Your life does not seem to synchronize with your going to church every day. What are you doing in church? Kila siku mbele mbele kanisa. Unafaidi nini bana? Twende tufanya biashara. You may think that the time you spend, the money you spend, the skills you give to the church are not worth it because you do not seem to see what you are getting in return. I want to ask you today not to be wary. Keep doing it. In a little while, you are going to reap a harvest. Don't give up. Even when they mock you. Even when they ask you questions. Even when they say you are going to church and your children are haywire. Don't be discouraged. Is somebody listening to me? You are going to church and your husband is a drunkard. Don't get weary. Keep doing good. Hallelujah. 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 God is doing things you cannot see, my sister and brother. God is doing things on the other side of heaven. Mungu anafanya mambo. Hujui. Mungu amekazana na wewe. Hujui. God is doing things on the other side of heaven. They have not manifested yet, but I'm assuring you they will manifest. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is working in you. And he's working thoroughly. And he's also working for that person you're praying for. Don't give up. Hello. He's working to produce a harvest. Amen. Amen. At the right time, you will reap. So my plea is never, never, never give up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Far too many people throw in the towel too soon. Let me tell you, if there was a time I would have thrown in the towel and left our church, it was that time. When you experience the rejection from the church. Then you ask yourself, Sasa, should I go to where I am not? But I didn't. And that's why today I'm still here. Conducting a 10 days of prayer. I have seen many Christians assume that their good works will come to nothing. So they stop it. And that happened to me. I'm a serious giver. Yani, I am a giver. Kupeana hivi. Atu menipata na niko na shilingi miatano na unataka miatano. Ayi. I'll give you miatano then I'll ask somebody. Ebu nisaidi na miamoja nyende nyumba. I'm that type of giver. My brother, I called him because we were talking about that in the morning. When I told him about the piece of land, he said, Amen, Amen. He was asking God. When you say people give and they are blessed, how come my sister, who he knows is a Tara giver, has been struggling? So today he has confessed that truly, you should not be wary. You finally harvest. There are some who have, have even decided, ah, ah, mimi sipeani. Because you give, and the person you give is the person who abuses you. You even give, you take somebody to school, to school, they finish, they get a job. After they get a job, they are the ones who are fighting you. Hello? I remember there's a time 
one of my relatives told me I had nurtured a lot of my relatives in my house. At one time in my house, I was living with 15 people. 15, Kuminatana, you'd think I was a do it was a dormitory, it was a school, I don't know. 15, half of them were not my relatives. They are young men, young girls in church who I found, they come, they have come from home, they've come to Mombasa, they don't know Mombasa, they are struggling, they have issues, and because God blessed me with a house of three-storied, my husband was working in the port, and we were given a big house with a big compound. I said, Buana, I have space, Kuja. Hello? Buana Sifil. And even when I did what I did, I still suffered rejection. One time when one of them got to where they got and they, they had big jobs and, 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 and I, I, an issue presented itself and I told them, you know you, you should call me your mother. He told me, hey, kwa ni mtu wakikusaidia sasa inakuwa wewe ni slave yake. Don't we experience those things? My friend, the same is true in our walk with God. We need to develop our spiritual grit. Spiritual grit here is you need to be a person who is filled with courage, who has a resolve, and who is filled with strength of character. You know, courage even to face it when things are falling apart. I know people who don't come to church when their lives go down. They were up there, then their lives take a, 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 a what? Eh? Mm, uh, uh, Kabilisha sentence here. Uh, uh. Ah, some assault. Thank you, Pastor. That's why the Lord placed you in the right position for me today. Hallelujah! Their life takes a somersault. I tell you, they stop coming to church. They stop. Or if they come, they sit. Immediately, they disappear. Why don't you? How's that? That you must start developing spiritual grit. Tell your neighbors, develop spiritual grit. In these times, we must develop spiritual grit. Even when I'm saying it to tell your neighbor, and you're not telling your neighbor, what spirit of stubbornness has overwhelmed you? Tell your neighbor, it is time to develop spiritual grit. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, you must develop spiritual grit in these times. My sister, tell your neighbor, not with folded hands. Mwambia hata ukim point kidogo, wewe. Develop spiritual grit. Hallelujah. And what I'm saying is you must start developing courage, strength, and a resolve that it doesn't matter what happens in your life, you will remain in the service of the Lord. You will remain praying to the Lord. You will remain in a close relationship with the Lord. Whether the world will fall apart, whether the storm will come, but I will be found clinging to my Savior. Hallelujah. And nothing will change that. Grit is something we do not often associate with spiritual matters. We associate it with busyness. You start a business, it falls, you try again. You try again. When this one does not work, you start another one. You are always struggling to ensure that what you have started continues. I wish that you take that spirit into your spiritual life. That you never give up. You keep pushing. You keep pushing. Because finally, you are going to reap. Hallelujah. Buana Sifiwe. Without grit, even spiritual success is not easy. Grit is the passion and the perseverance of pursuing a goal we deeply care about. We started by reminding you that you must develop a relationship with God so that you become a person who cares about God, cares about matters of God, cares about his interests, cares about his business. So when you get him to that level that you have a close relationship with him, then now the spirit of grit helps you to sustain that relationship. Hallelujah. Buona sifiwe. Buona sifiwe. The spirit of grit will help you to be a prayerful person continuously. Perhaps we have been distracted or discouraged. Or we may have given up in our hearts. And do, do not believe that God hears you anymore. 
I remember one day I had issues when I was alone. And I had prayed and prayed and prayed. One day I woke up in the middle of the night and I took an empty chair and I put it in the middle of my bedroom. And I told him, God, skiza, ebu kakwa hikiti. So I said, come, let's reason together. Kakwa hikiti. Then I pulled a chair and I sat. And I started talking to God like I'm talking to a, a physical healed person. But do you know the next day I got an answer? When my husband died, I had no job. I had stopped working completely. I was just preaching. Crusade, week of prayer. I remember when he was alive. <clears throat> At one time, he had not been promoted for a long time. Then I prayed with him, and he got promoted twice in a year. And I told him that promotion twice in a year, he <laughs> opesa niangu. Niangu. Buana sifiwe. Buana sifiwe. Hallelujah. My brothers and sisters, perhaps we've been distracted and been, we've been discouraged or we've given up. I talked to God. The next day, I didn't have a job. I didn't know where to get a job because for many years I'd stopped working. A gentleman called me, Amzungu. We had met in one of the forums that I normally attend. And he told me, Millicent, I want you to come and head a tourist organization. I asked him, yeah, I've not done tourism. My profession, very far from tourism. He says, no, your charisma, who you are, I'm sure you can manage this organization. And I accepted. Because yesterday I was crying to God and saying, I'm left with children. And you know, I don't have much when my husband had just started working with Cape Kenya Pipeline at that time. He was shot within three months of his working with Kenya Pipeline. So is there any pensioner? Niko pension ya mana? Three months, he was still on probation. I took that job with two hands. Hallelujah. But after I told God, ebuka hapa na mini kai hapa, tuzungumuze kama, kama wananyumba, kama baba na mtoto yake. The next day, he answered me. He said, this one is now too serious. And that's the job that I maintained for 10 years. And my time when I was the CEO of that institution, which covers the whole of Coast Region, it has never performed as much as it did when I was at the top of it. And I've never done tourism. I never even went to school for tourism. But I managed because the grace of God is sufficient. And he gives you wisdom. Hallelujah. Buona sifiwe. Remember the widow who knocked and kept knocking without getting tired. Never think that God is indifferent to your cries. He is not. He is working something. And at the right time, the answer is coming. God, my brothers and sisters, is eager to help us. He's eager to help us far more than we can think. His business is us. He is eager to help us. Not just those who talk about prayer. Not just those who believe in prayer, or even those who can give nice explanations about prayer. He is able to help any child of God who holds onto the hem of his garments, no matter the situation and circumstances. I'm not seeing the time. When I see fear. And in being, and in being, Persistent in being in, in continuing in doing good despite the matters that you face every day. He is pleading with you today to practice persistence. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Practice persistent. God is not easy in easy way out. You know, it's us, and some of us want God to be like us. You get into a jam, it is a roundabout, and you realize there's no car coming this way, there's no car coming this way. The rule of the law is you still need to go around. But because you like easy way out, you quickly maneuver, and then you think you are a very good driver. You feel like, yeah, man. God is not that type of person who likes shortcuts and easy routes. He goes by the word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Buona sifiwe. So the Lord does not take the path of less resistance. 
in our prayers, my brothers and sisters today. Let us not settle for less or remain satisfied with short-sighted goals. Let us, let us be focused on pleasing nobody but God in our lives. And let us focus to persevere in our journey. It shall come to pass. Tell your neighbor it shall come to pass. And I'm telling you with confidence. You may tell me, hmm, hujui, hujui, you don't know what I'm going through. You don't know. I don't know. It is true, I don't know. But God knows. And whatever it is, whether you feel that you are in some deep, deep pits, the Lord is able to raise you from that pit and put your feet on dry ground. Hallelujah. Believe it and continue in fellowship. The moment you stop fellowshipping and you stop coming to church, you cut off the ability of God to walk with you the journey. Continue in fellowship. Continue in prayer. Continue in Bible study. Keep your hope alive. Buona sifiwe. Buona sifiwe. Buona sifiwe. If there's anybody here who is saying, I recognize today that I have been battered by the world. What people say, you could have been bringing rice to the church. Wewe ndi unaletanga rice. Rice. One day you find a woman saying, Sasa hii ni mchele, what sort of rice is this? How can somebody bring us this rice? And you stopped. You stopped. Start bringing. Is anybody hearing? Buena sifiwe. The person who is fighting you, it's in their nature to fight you. Let their nature not change your nature. Keep doing good. Hallelujah. Even when you have a rogue husband or a rogue wife, don't let their nature change you to the extent that you want to walk away from them. That's not the will of God. You lose out on your blessings even when you're not the one who was wrong. He wants you to persist. I'm not telling you to stay in an abusive relationship. No. But I'm saying persist in prayer. Hallelujah. Buenas So if there are people who are asking with me today, Father, anoint me with the ability to have the grit to keep standing even when storms are raging. We shall go into prayer. We shall go into prayer. My prayer warriors, my prayer team, come up front. We shall go into prayer. So we will pray for those who are desiring that the Lord today will anoint them with the spirit of not growing weary. At one time I thought doing good. And you know when you do good, somebody one day came to, and told me, you know, your money is taken to... Hmm? To which doctors? And that is why now your money is being drained. So at one time, Elder Oguk, Ochuka, I decided, I, I don't give people money. If they take my money to which doctors? That was the devil working on me now. Hallelujah. Keep giving. You are a protected child of God. Hallelujah. Don't change your character because your good is not being appreciated. So we shall pray. Praise the Lord. So who is praying for, uh, who is praying? You're praying for the world church. You're praying for us to grow and not be wary. Amen. God bless you. Praise God. Uh, let us humble ourselves and pray. We are going to pray according to the key text. We, we have uh, our preachers shared with us today. Galatians chapter 6, verse 9. 
and let us not grow weary of doing good, for in due season we will reap if we do not give up. Dear Jesus, we are the most, you are the most persevering being in the universe. You did not give up in your ministry of interceding and intervention. No matter what Satan and sinners throw at you, you are still you and in love. You give yourself to us. We are in awe of you, God. Teach us such spiritual selfless persistence, especially in our prayer life. Make us prayer warriors who do not give up. In due season, we will reap. Our loving God, we praise you for allowing us to participate in your mission on this planet. Amen. Thank you for the joy of service and the joy of engaging in the work of bringing people to you. Sometimes we feel discouraged and ready to give up, but we pray that you will give us the perseverance and spiritual grit needed to do the work you have called us to do. Thank you that you will bless and that we will see the fruit of this blessed ministry in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Together with that, we have prayer requests for the World Church, so we can take note, and even as we pray, we continue lifting them up in prayer. We pray for God to raise up brave missionaries willing to work among the 746 people groups in the 20 countries of the Middle East. Lord, please raise up modern-day Waldensian-type students willing to serve you in difficult places. We pray for Adventist members facing persecution or imprisonment because of their beliefs. We pray for the 202 million people in the 41 least-reached cities of the Southern Asia-Pacific Division to know Jesus. We pray for the Sabbath school or personal ministry department of each local church as they seek God's plan and reach out to their communities with loving service, Bible study, and personal witnessing. We pray for Adventist Deve Development and Relief Agency, ADRA, as they meet practical needs worldwide. Father, we come into your presence with thanksgiving. We thank you for the opportunity to be able to stand in the gap. We lift up all the young people all, of all ages, Father, who need to go out as the Waldenses to minister to your children who have not been reached. We lift up the, the people in the Asia-Pacific Division, Father, that you may minister to them, that they may come to know you even as we prepare for the closing times. Father, we also pray for the department, the, the personal ministry department that are making the calendars of the year currently, that you may fill them the Holy Spirit, that nobody surrounding the local churches will be left out, but all of them will be ministered to, that nobody may miss out in the blessings that you've accorded us. Father, we pray for Adra. There's so much that happens, even as the time closes. There, is, there, are, there, there are calamities that are happening, and even as they look for resources to be able to meet the needs of these people, we pray in a special way, Father, that even us, we may be part of the donations that will go out to minister to your children. May your name be honored, Father, for great is thy faithfulness. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. These are the prayers uh, that we have received from the online uh, viewers. And um, I know there are many that may have come after this, but we, we just got the first five. So this will include even those whose uh, requests are still being typed right now, and including those that have been put in the prayer boxes here in church. Sister Oroko Kemunto has a silent prayer. Rasipos is praying for family to be financially stable and to start a business and get a job. Margaret Hammond prays for her sick daughter, Angela, and for the entire family. Yvonne Awar is praying for um, uh, a job. And Stacy McKenzie is praying for healing and for, his, for her sick brother. Shall we believe and pray? Everlasting Father who liveth on high, great is your faithfulness because morning by morning new mercies we see. Lord, we have come that we may lift up our cups so that you can fill them to the brim, even to the overflow. Because in thee we have trusted, we pray therefore, Lord, that we may never be confounded. Thank you for your promises and for your word that has been spoken to us through the uh, maid servant.
thank you for the privilege of sitting here in this auditorium and even those who are following online that we may be blessed by you through your word that is never changing, your word that will not leave us the same again. We commit our sister Kemunto, whatever prayer request that she has, Lord, we bring it to you at this hour. May you meet her at her point of need. Whatever it is, O oh Lord, that is bothering her heart, together with many others who may be having such silent prayer requests, dear Lord, we know that the Spirit of the Lord prays for us with groanings that cannot be uttered. And we know for sure, dear Lord, that you work in us silently to move us to do your will in all, our, in all aspects of our lives, dear Lord. I pray that their, their lives may be in, in, in accordance, dear Lord, with your holy will, so that even the prayers that we make may be uh, answered according to your will. Our, um, our member recipes who is praying for a family to get financially stable, Lord, you are the owner of uh, silver and gold. The Bible says that the cattle on a thousand hills belong to you. The earth indeed is the Lord's and its fullness thereof. There is nothing that you can need from men that you do not have. And therefore, all the riches and bounties, all the silvers and gold, all the rubies and diamonds, all belong to you. I pray that you may bless your daughter with a job that your name will be glorified in due time. Margaret Hammond is praying for her sick daughter, Angela. Well, Lord, we bring Angela to your throne of grace this hour. I pray that you stretch your healing hands because indeed up to now we know that the blood of Jesus is still fresh and is still able to heal. We know that there is still a balm in Gilead that when we trust and look up, O oh Lord, we shall live. When we look and live, dear Lord, uh, we shall be able then to give glory and honor to your name. Father, uh, our sister Yvonne is praying. Uh, for a job, and you again is the you are the owner of all that we can see and all that we cannot see. I pray, Father, in a special way that you may provide a job. We have had a testimony from our, our speaker, the way she prayed for a job, and the following day she got a job. May this be the testimony of Yvonne and many others who are looking for jobs. Sister Mackenzie is praying for healing and for her sick brother. I pray, O oh Lord, that you will still continue to heal your children, including Mackenzie. When you are stretching your healing hands upon us, even as we are seated here, when you are healing our spiritual and physical wounds, O oh Lord, may you remember your servant Mackenzie, that she may also have a testimony. Lord, we pray that all the requests that have been put inside these prayer boxes here, I pray, O oh Lord, that you may open them one by one. They have not been presented to any man, neither have they been presented to any agency, except to you, O oh Lord. And you know them one after another. Each paper, unfold it, O oh Lord, and read every word, every sentence, even the full stops that have been written therein, that in due course your children will come back with the testimonies. The Bible says that when the uh, Lord turned the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dream. Oh, Lord, I pray that you may make this reality come for your children as if they are dreaming, yet it is a reality because you are God and you are able to do exceedingly and abundantly more than we can ask or imagine. Now, as we continue in the mood of prayer, as we continue to consecrate ourselves this week, as we continue to wait upon you, I pray that you will attend to us and meet us at our various points of need only for the glory of your name. It's my prayer in the mighty and powerful name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Um, Ken, please stand up and let the congregation see you. That's my last one, brother. Uh, wave. That's my, <laughs> this is my last one, brother. I'm happy that he found time to come and just be with me. Uh, that tells you that I'm a good sister, eh? Sindio? Simunga wabariki. I pray that his presence will go with you. I pray that the paths of your life shall shine brighter and brighter every day. And I want to thank you so much for your patience. I want to thank you so much for sitting through, even when sometimes and oftentimes we go beyond the actual time. May the Lord bless you for that patience. And that truly is a sign that the Holy Spirit dwells in you. 
Again, I will humbly request you not to walk out of that door until your leaders ask you to leave because they definitely have an announcement to make. God bless you all. Turn to your neighbor and tell your neighbor. Tell your neighbor. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yes. And how do we call ourselves? Children of? Children of? Children of God. God is good. Are we blessed today? If you're blessed, please just wave. Thank you so much, our speaker, Mrs. Millicent. We thank all of you for making it here to this prayer meeting, the sixth day of the 10 days of prayer. We invite you to come again tomorrow. And please, if you get a friend, please bring a friend tomorrow. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord go with you. And may the Lord bring you back tomorrow in Jesus' name. Just one minute, one minute. Did anybody bring a friend today? Ah, beautiful. Where is your friend? Give, give him the microphone. Where is, where is he? Where is the friend? Ah, hallelujah. Can we all wave at her? Can we all wave at her and thank God for her finding time to come and be here with us today? Is she a Seventh-day Adventist? Oh, beautiful. So you have two points. No, 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 Nifuata. Two points. What's your name? David. David. I also brought a friend. So, Pastor, yesterday was eight points, two points, ten points. Hello. Anybody else who brought a friend? God bless you. Where is your friend? Beautiful. Where's your nephew? Nephew, hallelujah. Can you come? Can you come? The friend, the nephew, please come forward. Come forward. Come forward. We thank you for visiting. We thank you for deciding to come. It's a pleasure. It's a honor. It is so much respect when people choose to come and worship with you. Don't you think so? Anybody else? Yes. Your sister. What's your good name? Ah, and where's your sister? Sister, please come up front. Hallelujah. Is she come come up up here? Up, 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 up. Sister, please come forward. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let me tell you, heaven is rejoicing. The work you've done to bring them here. You have a crown. Hey, sister, sister. Praise God, sister. Praise God. Anybody else? I saw another hand. I saw another hand. I saw another hand. Or it was an angel passing. It was an angel passing. God bless you. I don't know what to say. Bono kuna sura ya kazi hivyo. Hebu nisimailie kidogo. Karibu sana 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 sana. Oh, this girl is pretty, pretty. Very pretty. Hallelujah. Pastor will pray with you. You will put them in the hands of God. Just bless them. And, um, and uh, then I will release you. Shall we rise up as we pray? Loving Father, loving Father, loving Father. Loving Father. Loving Father, we thank you for this beautiful evening. We thank you for the, the favor to be in your presence this evening. And in the audience of your word, brought to us by your servant, your child, Sister Millicent, we thank you and praise your name for the edification that is now ours. And we thank you for how you are moving on our hearts. Not just to come alone, but to come along with our friends. We praise your name, Lord, for your children, your servants, your children who have brought along friends uh, to thy house of prayer for all nations who have brought their friends uh, to the audience of your word and we have been blessed together. I pray for your blessings upon them and I pray for your blessings upon all of us as we continue to bring along our friends and for the friends who have come 
we pray for your very special blessings upon them. Blessings of protection, blessings of provision, blessings of care, and blessings of redemption. Bless them, and if it pleases you, grant them the grace to return again with us until we finish these 10 days of prayer. And if it were possible, as David said, that I was happy when they told me, let us go to the house of the Lord, that they will be of the spirit of David who, uh, who was happy and uh, that you will cause them to be happy to be in your house forever and ever. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, honestly, my brother must come up front. See, he was a guest. Opere, Ken, be an epiopio melekai. As I say, just one word to the people who have chosen to come and worship with us this evening, that may the Lord's grace be sufficient for you. May the Lord's grace be sufficient for you. My brother. Hallelujah. in all witnesses, and may he give you the desires of your heart, now that you've stepped into his house.